So we have a special speaker with us this morning um, that you've heard many times before, Pastor Jacques. I'm not special anymore. Uh, that's the second time in December. <laughs> right? Special is when you come once in a while. Still special? We all special. So are you well this morning? Are you awake? We got to finish our, the year. Remember tomorrow night, that's it for 2018. So this morning is your last service in the house of the Lord. You better rejoice and be happy. Amen. Right? Because if you're not happy, who's going to be happy? Well, well, I, uh, Pastor Travis asked me to, uh, to preach, what is it, Friday afternoon sometime? <laughs> kind of a last minute thing. We do that sometime, you know, stretch people, Remember? I used to stretch some of you, remember? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I said, okay. And um, I had a few things, you know, I had the, could preach to anything I want. This is good. can say anything I want. can take people anywhere I want. This is good. There's no strings attached. Okay. So today... Um, so I began to, to, to work on my stuff, you know, and I worked on it till 5 o'clock this morning. No, I didn't work all night. <clears throat> <laughs> I did sleep a little bit. And then, at, and you know, God does that to me sometimes, and I hate it. <laughs> you know, I'm working on my own stuff, and I'm doing good, and everything is okay, and my wife looks at it, and she said, it's awful. Well, it's not awful, but where are you going, right? I said, yeah, she's right. She's right. Where am I going? So at 5 o'clock this morning, I said, God, this is my message. It's not going nowhere. It's facts. You want to know facts? Or you want to know truth? Facts will not set you free. Free? Free. <laughs> But truth will set you free. Amen. So between 5 and 7, uh, I got a new download and everything. I said, okay, now I can go with that. All right? Are you going to follow me? Yep. All right? You're going to awaken? I might yell and wake up some of you if you fall asleep on me. All right. So 2018 is gone. What maybe you could have done or what you didn't do or what you did, it's gone. We're entering a new time, new season. And you know what? We want to enter that time at that season with God, not on our own. Because I, I've, been, I've done stuff on my own, and you know what? It's rubble. It's a... Nothing, but when you do something with God, with God, doesn't have to be much, but it's good. It's good. So, uh, title of my message, I mentioned that last time I preached. Some, there's more, and there's all. Okay? In God, there is some. Some people are more hungry, so there is more for them. And some people are really, really, really hungry. There's all. So the level that you go with God doesn't depend on Pastor Travis. It doesn't depend on me. It doesn't depend on nobody. It depends on, are you hungry? And you know, when you get hungry for God, things begin to happen. So, uh, God opened the window of heaven for your people. Meaning God wants to give you, 
You know, I mean, who wants to receive? Who are a good receiver? Come on. Who is good? We all. When you have a gift that is nice and you like it, hey, give it to me. Give it to me. I'm a good receiver. And God has good things for his people. We know that. There is bad thing that might come your way, but God has good thing. Always remember that, you know. So, <laughs> so God, give me, give me, give me. And that's good. But today we're not going to go there. It's me. I'm going to give you something, God. Because he's waiting for your gift. He's waiting for my gift. Because your gift and my gift, he loves. Because it comes from your heart. It doesn't come from your wallet. It doesn't come from your whatever. It comes from your heart. So does God want some? Yes. Does he want more? Yes. And this is the key. Does he want all of you? Yes. And you know what? We, we come to the Lord. We, we say, God, I give you my heart. Now, that's supposed to be the most precious thing of your being, your heart. You know, if somebody got your heart, he's got everything. But if somebody takes your heart and step on it, you have nothing. Because your heart is broken. And you know, around the course of life, broken heart will happen. But we can't stay there. So God wants everything. So I want to give God everything that I have. Because, you know, we've been saved, and I mentioned 40 years. You've been saved longer, remember? I think I won't say how many years. And sometimes it's like I'm sitting there and say, God, I don't have enough of you. Is this a joke? You know, you go to church, you, you give money, and it's all good. And, you know, you, you come here, and we meet together, we sing, we dance, or whatever. Then we go home, and we live a life, not a bad life, but God is not totally in it. It's my life. It's your life. And we give a little bit to God. We give some to him. But he wants all. And that's what he wants. So we're starting 2019 now. Tomorrow. By tomorrow night. And you want to give God your all. But some of you are really sometimes broken. You are. You got to give him your brokenness. And sometimes, you know what? You want to hang on to the brokenness because as long as I'm molding to that brokenness, you know, I, I can feel something. But God says everything. We're going to read today about 1 King 17, verse 1. And it's about uh, Elijah. And I'm going to read the whole thing, 16 verse. So I'm going to try to pronounce this. It's King James Version 2. So be patient. I'll go slow. I might talk about it, whatever. So, 1 King 17 verse 1. Elijah the Tishbit, who was of the Habitants of Gilead said to Ahab, the king, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years. Years with an S, right? These years. Uh, but according to my word. Now, The word of Elijah was God's word. He received the word from God. God not only speaks in the New Testament, but he speaks 
in the Old Testament too. And we can see that. So he told Elijah, tell the king, no rain for three and a half years. So he did. And the word of the Lord, verse 2, came unto him, saying, Get thee, and turn to the east, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, that is, before the Jordan. So he's leading the prophet. Do you have to be a prophet to be led by God? No, we don't. See, the minute you start opening your life to God, he begins to speak to you. And he said to him, go by the brook. And he said, when you're there, I'm going to feed you. And I'm, you got water. All we need is water and bread, right? And we can live. So he goes there. And verse 4. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the raven to feed you. So God's got it all figured out. How do you like that? You know what? He's got all your life figured out. How do you like it? And sometimes we just go this way, and sometimes we do the Jonah thing, and we go this way or whatever. He had the prophet days figured out. And he said, go by the brook. So he went there. And he sent the raven, blackbird. And in the morning, they brought him a hamburger, bread and meat. And at night, he had the same thing, and he ate that. Right? So he kept him there for a while. Now, the, the thing was about three, three and a half years. He might have stayed there a year, year and a half. I don't know. It doesn't really say. But he had water, he had food. God was taking care of him while God was doing his thing with the drought and all the people and everything, right? So he did. He he went and he did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook, okay, that is before the Jordan. And the raven brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there has been no rain in the land. So there you go. God tell him to do something. He does it. And then something else happened. But God is in control of his life, isn't he? And he said to him something else. Are you following me? Do you like my reading? You're putting up with me, right? And the word of the Lord came unto him again. I underlined that. I mean, you won't see it over there. But in my Bible, I underlined that. Because it says that it came to him again. Arise, go to Zarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded widow woman there to sustain you. Man alive. Does he need have his life, God tells him, go. And you know, I don't think it was maybe a day's work. Maybe it was two, three. I haven't figured out the mileage from one place to the next. Might have been a while before he got to Zarephath. And then he had commanded a widow. So, he had spoke to a widow. Widow. Did I say widow? Widow. No. Widow. Huh? Widow. Widow. Thank you. I knew I'd get it right. That's why you have to help me sometime, okay? If I get stuck, just say the word. That's okay. I'm not going to get hurt. And he has commanded a widow to sustain him. So he rose, arose, and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering stick. And he called her and said, Fletch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel. So he said, Give me a little bit of water. So she went 
to get him some water. Um, and then he stopped her and he says, um, not just water, a little bit of bread. And you know, this is time of famine, isn't it? It's a time where there's not much water, there's not much food. And he asks her, he says, give me a piece of bread. Okay. And she said, as the Lord liveth, she's a believer, all right. I have no cake but a handful of meal in the barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two stick that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. So, so this is basically, it's life or death. All she has in her jar is a handful of flour and some oil. Isn't that true? That's what the Bible says. But God spoke to her, feed the man of God. Isn't that true? How would you like if that saw you have in your cupboard or in your fridges, one pizza? And Pastor Travis come over with his kid. <laughs> Never mind, they do that in Cuba, right? They have nothing, and you go there, and they put it all on the table. So they, they're used to that. I mean, they're really, here we're not. And, you know, uh, one uh, little medium pizza, and uh, he all sit there, and, and you know what? I mean, he's so happy he's got something to eat, but that's all you got left in the house, nothing else. They gave you everything. They gave the pastor, Travis, and his family, the whole thing, the whole pizza. Now they have nothing to eat. And this is life or death. If she was going to die after, anyway, after she ate that little bit of flour with her son, but she heard God. And God said, you've got to sustain the prophet. Give him some flour. And the prophet comes and he says the same thing. Give me some flour. It's pretty bold, eh? One lady with her kids, they're dying, just a little bit of flowers. Give me, give me the flower. Now, I've got a prop today. I didn't have a... So I have a... Marilyn's going to help me. Marilyn, why is she? All right. She's going to be the little widow. All right? You're a widow, right? Okay, she is. All right. And uh, you can s stand right here. Okay. And the prophet Elijah is talking with the widow. And he said, <coughs> and she says to me, now first she says to me, uh, I have not a cake but a handful. Put your hand up. Handful. Just, just one. Just one. <laughs> okay. Okay. A handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil. That's all she has, right, in my cruise. And behold, I am gathering two stick that I might go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And that's what she tells the man of God. I mean, I only got this with a bit of oil. We're going to eat that. We're going to die. And the man of God says, go and cook me a bread. And you know what? She's obedient. She leaves. She goes. <laughs> and Elijah said to her, fear not. Okay? Fear not. He saw fear in her. I'm giving him everything I've got. I'm afraid for my life. You know, because we are in a world that high thing, right? Like iPhone, you know? I, me, my job, you know, my life, my car, my house, it's all me, right? And then God says, well, give me everything you've got. 
He tells me, give me everything you've got. And, and you know, we kind of take possession of things. And it's not that, you know, you want you to put everything under God's name and the bank or everything, but he says, fear not. Go and make me a little cake. Well, that's quick. <laughs> First, and bring him to me, and after, you can make yourself. Now, thank you, little widow. She made this bread. With all she had. Didn't she? There's no more flour in her jar. There's no more oil in her little cruise. There's nothing. And she brings it to the man of God. Now she's going to die. Now she's, her and her son. What's your son, by the way? He's back there. Back there, okay. <laughs> That's everything she's got. Everything she's got, and she brings it to the man of God. And I, I wasn't there, but the man of God probably <laughs> mm. it's good. Good, you made good bread. And then she had nothing. But she had the word of the prophet. And you know what? The word of the prophet is good. It's powerful. And it said, and, and she went according to the saying of Elijah, and she went and baked herself a bread. Now the jar was empty. But because of the word of the Lord, now the, the jar wasn't full. There was still enough to make one bread. And the next day there was still enough to make another bread. And you know, it, they say it lasts for about a year, a year and a half. Every day she went because she obeyed God, because she gave everything she had, now every day she has something to go in because the man of God said, do that. And she did. And the barrel of meat wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. Amen. Now, I had my bread. Go make your bread. She'll make her bread. I always wonder about Jesus. When he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's there by, by himself and he's praying. And you know, he come out of there. And then he was arrested in the, in the Garden of There you go. You got your bread, lady. Yeah. So you can sit down and eat it. Well, no, leave it, uh, leave it over here. We'll eat it together after. How's that? And I always wonder about Jesus. When they arrested him, now the soldier, this guy had sword. They had stick. They're not clumsy guys. You know, they go there to kill. They go there to grab Jesus, to bring him. And there was 12 disciples. Peter took his sword. I mean, this was a little bit of a, a, a match. And Jesus says, who do you seek? They say, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, I am he. When he said that, Everybody fell on the ground. And you know, it's not really recorded anywhere else in Jesus' ministry that everybody just fell on the ground. 
I mean, these are soldiers. They're just not clumsy and tripping over one another. It was the power of God on Jesus. I am he. And then boom, 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 all on the floor. And they stood up again. And I was always thinking, why did you do that there? Why not do that maybe when he changed the water to wine? I mean, these big stone jar, 25, 30 gallon each, all changed in wine. I mean, he could, he could have just left his hand and everybody at the wedding. They were drunk anyway, so they wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> and you know what? Or maybe when he raised Lazarus from the dead. You know, I mean, this is powerful. Four days dead, and Jesus come over here, and he says, the tomb be open, Lazarus come forth, and all that stuff. Nobody fell. I mean, the power of God was there. But the power of God was also there in the garden. I want you to, to read. Uh, uh, I didn't read John 18, but if you want to read, uh, put on Luke 22, verse 42. Luke 42. 22, verse 42. And you know, Jesus is in the garden, and he says to his father, If you are willing, please remove that cup from me. Take it away. Now, Jesus talked about his crucifixion many times. But there's something about talking about something, but there's something about doing something. You can talk about a lot of stuff, and it's, it's okay, but when you have to do it, whatever it is, it's, you know, you can talk about, I'm getting my brain operation. They're going to take my brain out, they're going to clean it up and put it back in. <laughs> but it's another thing when you're on the table. And you know, they, they're going to do that. Now you're thinking twice, right? And he says, please remove this cup from me. He didn't want to. He didn't want to. But then he says, not my will, but your will. You know, at that time, because we're going to partake of communion this morning, and we're talking about, he did all this. For the cross. And he's there praying on his knee and he's praying and he's waking up his disciple and he's praying. He said, Please help me. This is all I've got, everything. See, Jesus didn't give some, he gave all for me and for you. And he's asking us to give all. But sometimes we Say, well, no, I'm going to keep some. And we do it unwillingly or willingly or whatever. It doesn't matter. Our life is not in fullness because of it. You know, because something and somebody did something to me and, you know, just not going to let it go. I'm going to hold on to it. God says, give it to me. Well, I'll give you this, but I'll keep this. And you know what? And many times, you know, it's about my life, and it's about, you know, what I'm going to do, and it's about me, and it's hard to disconnect me from all. It's hard to say, God, I'll give you my all. And you know what? And, and you know I'm not looking at you guys. I'm looking at me. You know... Been saved for a while, but sometime I got to sit back to the drawing board and say, Have I got my all into it? Does he have my all into it? Because if he doesn't have my all, then it's going to affect me and my life. This lady came, gave her all, and God took care of her. 
If you come and you give your how, God will take care of you. He will take care of what's happening. And sometimes we've got to repent and say, Lord, forgive me because I've been in it for my own gain. It was all about my result. It was all about what I did. I, I, and I. And you know what? God wants everything. Jesus gave his all for you and for me. And you know, we have to learn in 2019 to operate in a new fashion where God is first in our life. Amen. Where we're second or third, it doesn't matter. But he's got our heart. Then there's that connection with him. See, I want to connect with God. It's so easy to disconnect. It's it's so easy to disconnect. You get involved in a business. You get involved with a relationship. You get involved with with, uh, your work. You get involved with your career. Did I say that right? Career. You get involved with anything. And you know it's center in your life. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going it. I, 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 I. And God says, me, 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 me. This is who you have to give everything to. It's to him. Starting 2008 and 19, we don't really need a big prophecy, though we may get one. That's not the point. What we need is knowing that God has our heart totally. And we don't take it back. I'm giving it to you, Lord. And every time I would go to take it back, say, no, it's yours. I gave it to you. See, Jesus done it, and he's not, he's not saying, well, I shouldn't have done that because some of, the, some of my kids are not really taking it seriously. And, you know, I went through the, all that pain. He's not saying that. He's done it. He gave his all. And when he gave his all, that's all he had. So coming back to the garden... When you give your heart to God, then is power abide in you. When you want to witness or you want to share because you gave everything like Jesus, you know, like the, the power was on him and everybody. Whew. So we mature and grow and give our all and God fills us with his presence. And then people look at you and say, I can see Jesus in you. You, you're different. There's something different. You're different because you gave everything to him. And everything you give to God, he cherishes it, and he takes it, and he sets it apart. And, you know, maybe it's a brokenness you give to him. And that's fine. That's okay. He'll take anything. Maybe it's part of your heart that you've been keeping for yourself or whatever. And, you know, you look at people sometimes, and, you know, they have nothing, and they gave everything they have, you know, in every way. And, you know, they're blessed by God, you know. I want to read another scripture I forgot. Philippians 2, verse 8. Do you have that? Philippians 2, verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man. You know, he didn't go in the garden as a half man and half God. As a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. That's his work. That's what he did. He gave all for us. Now there is our work we have to do, my friend. As we go in 2018, we give everything. And you know what? It's hard because you're going to fall back. You're going to end up, but you come back to it. You come back. No, I can't take it. I left it there. I cannot take it. That's it. It's God. I give it to you. And you know, sometimes you just want to get it, but no. And this is the mindset. From there, God will take care of you. He will supply your need. He will take care of everything in your life. He's first. You know, my wife and I started praying about a month ago, maybe more, maybe six weeks. And we just said we're going to pray 30 minutes a day together. That's a good thing. 
So we start, and, and then, uh, you know, I, I, not that lately, I figure, well, it, it's like now it's mechanical. It used to be, uh, it used to be uh, from the heart more, and now it's becoming, well, we've got to do this, we've got to do this, and we've got to pray half an hour, and now it's more mechanical. And I said to her last night, I said, you know, this has become, we have to change that. You know what I mean? It's so easy to slip back to the old self or slip back in a, in a place where you don't want to be slip back this way. Constantly you've got to work, work, work. It's not a decision you make today and you keep forever. You have to work at it all the time. Work at it. And you know, and say, God, I need your help. God, I give you everything. I need your help. And you will. You will. Now we serve an awesome God. We serve a God that is more able to do above what we can take or ask. He's awesome. And I want to leave you with this this morning. Um, we're going to have communion this morning. I don't know what time is it. Okay. That's all the word I have for you. Do you receive it? Yes. You're going to take it home. You're going to chew on it. Yes. You're going to spit some things out. Yeah. You've got to spit the bone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Things in your life you don't want, spit them out. And 